You'll remember when our new King of England, Charles III, was crowned a few weeks ago. He was anointed with a special fragranced oil. A deeply spiritual experience which we weren't allowed to see because it was such an intimate moment presumably and there was a screen around him. But this comes directly from the Old Testament where kings and priests and prophets were anointed with oil. They needed God's grace. They needed this wonderful anointing of the Holy Spirit in able to serve God. It was also a reminder that it was only as they bowed the knee to the God of all the earth that they would be able to serve the people gently in a spirit of humility and grace. Power can be very insidious and of course God's power and authority that he gives to human beings was shown by Jesus who washed the disciples' feet. It is power to serve, it is power to enable others and to love others, not power to lord it over them. The anointing of oil upon these prophets and priests and kings was all the more notable because the Holy Spirit did not come upon ordinary people. However, there are various uh, Old Testament promises that claimed that God would pour out his spirit, but not yet. So let me tell you first about the prophet Ezekiel, who says in Ezekiel 36 that God is going to make the hearts of human beings tender and soft. First of all, he's going to cleanse us with pure water. Remember, we talked about water being a sign of the Spirit. And then God said that he would remove the hard hearts from his people, the hard hearts that didn't want to follow him and that they were hard towards one another. And he would replace that hardness with a tender, soft and gentle heart. Ezekiel goes on to say that he will put his spirit within the hearts of ordinary people so that everyone will want to follow God. Everyone will want to keep God's laws of love and right living. Another prophet called Joel had said that God would pour out his own spirit upon all kinds of people. They would be young and old, rich and poor, slaves and free. That no matter where you were from or what your station was in life, wouldn't make any difference. God would pour out his Holy Spirit and they would dream dreams, they would have visions, they would prophesy, speak God's word, and that everyone would call upon the name of the Lord. Well, clearly this is what appears to be happening. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, Jesus has died, Jesus has risen, he has ascended to the Father, and as he promised the disciples, he has poured his Spirit upon them. And here we have these timid, fearful men who had scuttled away like frightened rabbits, and they've been hiding in a locked room praying together and suddenly the Holy Spirit comes in such power and they go out uh, into the streets below and they shout and praise and announce what God has done in Jesus Christ, that Jesus truly uh, is the Messiah, that he is risen uh, again. And Peter goes on to explain that this was a fulfillment of that ancient word from Joel that we just talked about. In the Hebrew language, the word spirit is the same as breath and as wind. It was also symbolized by fire, a fire that would burn and purify and set the people's hearts alight to do good and to teach the gospel 
in Jesus' name. And so, on the day of Pentecost, the disciples were praising God and shouting out the wondrous deeds that God has done in Jesus. And they were crying out these statements in languages that they had never heard, so that all of the people from foreign parts who had come to Jerusalem for the annual Pentecost celebrations could hear the gospel in their own language. I believe this is a picture of God's word being symbolized by those many languages. God's word now had come to ordinary people. Their hearts and their tongues would overflow with the great things that God had done. The wine of the Holy Spirit had filled their hearts and filled them with so much joy. This was not Dutch courage, this was the power of the Holy Spirit that made them courageous and bold. And it wasn't just for that day. Those followers of Jesus went to all the ends of the earth, the Roman Empire, uh, and preached the gospel without fear. And many of them uh, became martyrs as a result, but not until the world had been truly turned upside down by the good news of Jesus Christ. So what is the significance of being filled with the Spirit? Why do we need to be filled with the Spirit or baptised in the Holy Spirit? When you first committed your life to Christ, all your sins were washed away. And as Jesus said, my Father and I will come and make our home with them. And so God came to dwell in your heart, in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been uh, guiding you and leading you, uh, making your uh, conscience uh, tender uh, and, and more likely uh, to listen to what God is telling you. In one of the resurrection experiences, Jesus breathed upon the disciples and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. You remember that Jesus has breathed upon us and we have the Holy Spirit within. But he also told the disciples quite expressly to wait and seek God in Jerusalem that they might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think you'll agree that that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. These people were praying, they were seeking God, they were asking to be filled with power. They knew their need of God. Uh, they were frightened. Uh, they were being hounded by their authorities and they were in an upper room. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they received power from on high, just as Jesus promised. They were no longer dead. Uh, they were filled with confidence uh, and wisdom. Sometimes they speak in tongues. Uh, sometimes they prophesy. When the Holy Spirit comes in power upon us, he gives us other gifts too. And uh, that's our task afterwards to uh, seek God and to work out what those gifts are that he's given us. Uh, that'll be to glorify him, uh, not to make ourselves look good, uh, to serve him uh, and to serve his people and to help us to witness to Jesus with courage and confidence. Does life get easier when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, baptised in the Holy Spirit? Well, I have to say <laughs> that you'll still be tempted. Uh, I think we're always going to be tempted as long as we're on the earth. The more the Holy Spirit shows you parts of yourself uh, that need to be reckoned as dead, uh, be buried in Christ under the waters of baptism. Holy Spirit, we come to you with an open heart and an open mind. Turning away uh, from anything, from the past or the present, that you bring to mind any allegiances, anything of darkness uh, to do with the occult. Lord, we truly repent of these and ask your forgiveness. 
unblock us, Lord, of anything that stands in the way and shine your light upon us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and free us to be kings and priests in Jesus Christ, as you've meant us to be. Amen. <laughs>